Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Bobby Cherry 2. Today I'm going to be bringing you a pistol review of my Springfield XD40 subcompact. This gun is clear, no mag, empty chamber, and we're ready to go. I'm going to ride the slide over. Oh, this gun does have factory night sights. We'll get that in just a minute. Um, I'm not, of course, you know, I have a video up on the G27. I will be doing a comparison video where I put this pistol head to head with the G27 Gen 4. But this video is solely on this pistol. Um, I'm going to go through a couple of the technical specs. I've seen a few videos uh, online uh, comparing it to the Glock and MP and the SR9C and, you know, whatever. It is what it is. But this video is about this pistol. Uh, this pistol has a 3 inch barrel. The capacity is 9 plus 1 and 40. And 9 millimeters, 13 plus 1. Um, it's got a steel trigger and it's got a rail. And it's just like I said, this particular pistol has night sights. And I, yeah, that's going to be a big issue later. Um, first thing we're going to get to is the trigger. The trigger, bu, 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 focus, thank you. The trigger, uh, it's rated by Springfield at six and a half pounds. When it breaks, it breaks clean. I mean, this thing's got a really, really nice trigger when it breaks. Reset, that's reset, that's break. Reset, that's break. There's a little bit of take up between reset and break. Um, I hold, I level the same criticism at the SIG. I did a, a video on the SIG P220. All the SIGs, they all do that same thing. When it, when the trigger resets from, from reset to break, um, there's that little bit of take up. But, you know, there's uh, companies that call it, of course, you know, with Smith & West, you got Apex Tactical. With the Glocks, the big one is Lone Wolf. And, uh, God, what else? There's a million of them for the Glock. For this one, it's either Springer, it's Springer Precision or Powder River Precision. Those are the two companies. You can go check them out. They do sell trigger kits for these guns. But if you're going to carry this gun, I wouldn't recommend doing anything to it. Because that trigger, when it, when it breaks, I mean, that's, I mean, good. This is probably, uh, from an aspect of trigger break, this is probably the best uh, polymer trigger that I've ever snapped. And yes, I have snapped the PPQ. I have snapped the FNS. Uh, I've actually shot an FNS, and it was actually a pretty good experience. But this is about this. At break, that's probably the smoothest trigger I've ever pulled. And I really, really like it. Um, taking this gun down, you got to hold the grip safety to move the slide. I'll get to that in just a minute. Hold the grip safety. Slide back, rotate up, make sure it's unloaded. Don't blow your hand off, and then, and then dry fire and put the slide. The guide rod is steel, baby. Thank God, I like steel. I know people like plastic, uh, but when you can incorporate steel parts into a gun, especially in the form of the critical components, which which the recoil uh, spring is a is a mission critical component. Uh, I always advocate those parts be steel. Uh, this gun, from a standpoint of build quality, is second to none. Second to none. I mean, just everything about the way this gun is built is just top notch. Um, I'm, I'm going to get to the sights real fast. These are factory Springfield XD sights. Um, I will tell you right now that if you want to change them yourself, uh, good luck because they're machine pressed in from the factory. Um, I, if I wanted to sell this gun, I could probably sell this gun for a premium just because anybody who was looking at buying a gun that didn't have night sights on it would have to pay a, a, um, a, a gunsmith to put sights in because you, it's damn near impossible to drift these sights out yourself. Um, it does have the loaded chamber indicator. It does have the... Where's it? Down. There it is. It does have the... Striker, or it's called a uh, cock striker indicator. Um, and the thing is about these guns is that a lot of people don't even notice it. I never really noticed it. A, a buddy of mine has Springfield XC45 Compact, and I never even looked at it to 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 see if it had it because I thought it did. What's missing? It doesn't. This gun does not have an internal extract, an external extractor. It has an internal extractor, very 1911-ish. Um, I know that's one of the weak points in a 1911, but I can tell you right now that, crank the light off, 
that is a honking piece of steel right there uh, I've never had any ejection issues with this gun I mean it, it, this gun just flings lead um, I know that the some of the uh, focus thank you I know some of the original XDs had a problem with the the I forget the technical term please forgive me if I get the term wrong the roll pin for the striker on some of them uh, they would work themselves out. This one I haven't had any problems with. Um, we're getting to the frame. This cam block assembly is just absolutely beefcake. I mean, that is substantial. I'm going to focus. focus for me. Thank you. This cam block assembly, it's got two beefy uh, pins in it. This, now, I'm going to get to these guy rails in it. This is beefy as all hell get out. The magazine. Um, release is steel unlike other designs I love Glocks but there's some things that I don't particularly care about them this whole assembly is what I like to see in a gun it's built tough it's rugged it's built to last it's built to take abuse now the criticism that a lot of people level on these guns let me turn this light off is that the the rear rails are polymer and they think that for some reason that is not going to hold up well let me tell you something. The rear rails, their only job in a gun is to keep the slide aligned. That's all they do. That's all they ever will do. They don't take any of the recoil abuse from the recoil spring, from the slide, from anything. That's what this does. All the rear guide rails do is keep the, is, is keep the, I can't talk, is keep the slide centered. That's it. Moving on, you see the, uh, see how the, this little lever activates the uh, striker block. This is the ejector. This is your trigger bar. Let me turn the light on, and I'm going to show you the one. One of the very few things I don't like about this gun is the grip safety. You can see the grip safety move. Now, the reason the slide won't come back as long as the grip safety is engaged is because it locks this sear into place. The sear will not move, and the slide can't get past it unless you depress. The grip safety is as, as memory serves me in the XDS as they corrected this problem because what a lot of people were saying is that well they weren't they really weren't too worried about uh, getting a bad grip on a gun because I can grip this thing awfully low and still and still uh, I depress it I mean you know past a certain point it won't depress but what they're saying is that if you're if you're wounded and you have a malfunction that to run the slide on a malfunction drill that to have this depressed you may not be able to depress this so in the XDS I saw that problem that's one of the criticisms I level against this gun <clears throat> the other criticism I level against it and it's not really a problem but it just pisses me off is that this gun well okay let me get the gun together and we'll talk about it is it's bore axis and you hear a lot everybody who does the re the reviews on the XDs tells you this is that the bore axis is high it is high let me turn this light off focus there you go the bore the bore center line height is high um, but in reality I don't like that just because it just adds more bulk it doesn't how can I say this I don't like the fact the bore center line height is high because to me it, I just think it adds more bulk to the pistol um, I not one of those people that don't like it because they say it it makes the re the gun recoil more. Uh, I've shot this side by side with a Glock 27, and in my hands, this one shoots smoother than a G27. A lot of that's probably the fact that the gun is is uh, almost half a pound heavier than a Glock 27. But then again, I just showed you the internals. Uh, anybody who's seen the internals of a Glock, I mean, it's built light. I mean, the the Glocks will run and run and run. But the the internals of this pistol are so substantial compared to a Glock. I mean, holy crap, the trigger steel. The trigger steel. Uh, the magazine release is steel. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, the gun from a build standpoint is much more substantial than a Glock. Another thing that it has that a lot of people don't take into consideration is that the recoil rod, it's a standoff recoil rod. 
And for all the people that don't know what that means, I know there's a lot of you out there that know what that means. Uh, and, you know, I like passing off my knowledge to other people so y'all can share that knowledge. Um, the recoil rod is a standoff rod. You see how this thing, stand by. Thank you. See how the recoil rod extends past the barrel? Now, we're going to ensure that this gun is unloaded. There's nothing in the chamber. There's no magazine in it whatsoever. So we're going to ensure that this gun is unloaded. I would do it on the towel, but to me, that's not realistic. A standoff guide rod, its main purpose is that if you get into a close counter com uh, confrontation and you literally are at, uh, I mean, you're close quarter contact, I mean, you're basically pushing the pistol up against the person's skin. Now, the first thing that touches the person's skin is the recoil rod, and you can push and push and push, and the slide won't go out of battery. Now, I'm going to dry fire it. Actually, you know what? I will do it this way. I'm going to push hard. And it still fires. I'm going to bring the Glock in only to demonstrate this. And we're unloaded with the Glock. That doesn't fire with the Springfield. I mean, well, that probably would have been a light strike, but at least the striker popped off. Um, that's where semi autos in general uh, fail compared to a revolver. Granted, in fact, if you take a revolver and push it up against somebody's skin, that's a block. If you might blow the barrel off, you go, but at least you get a shot off. Um, I think, from a standpoint of uh, how I shoot this pistol, honestly, um, I shoot this pistol slightly better than I do the Glock. I'm not even gonna lie. Uh, I can usually pick up, and I'm not trying. I'm not trying to brag when I say this, but by no means, I can usually pick up any pistol and shoot it decent. Uh, if I warm up to it, then I usually get really proficient with it. Um, but if if I'm at the range and, I, and I'm shooting this and I'm shooting the Glock, my groups are usually a, a, just a hair tighter with this gun uh, than they are with the Glock. It just are. I don't know why. I can't explain it. Maybe it's the fact the trigger breaks smoother. I don't know. But uh, but anyway, but guys, that's it. Uh, the next video that you're going to see is, is going to be a head-to-head -head between the Glock and this gun. And I'm, hopefully, y'all look forward to seeing that. I'm trying to get my channel grown, uh, get more videos out there. Uh, I need to get more shooting videos out there. Uh, maybe someday I can be just like Hickok45. Big shout out to you, buddy. Y'all take care. Be safe. Rate, subscribe, comment. I appreciate y'all watching. Take care. Be safe.